Hi, and welcome to Tapped into Hudson. I'm Steve Lennox, and I'm the publisher of Tap into Hoboken, Tap into Bayonne, and Tap into Jersey City. It's so nice to be back in the Hudson Media Group studios here in North Bergen. We have the cameras, we have the lights, we have the production crew, and we have Chris Holler, our intrepid reporter from Tap into Hoboken. Chris, how are you today? I'm doing well, Steve. How are you? Good. Chris, a lot has happened since we've last been in the studio. Of course, we've been doing these shows remotely because I was out of the country for a few weeks. It's nice to be back in person. It is. It's yeah. nice to have our masks off. It is. You feel absolutely. like we're a little bit safer and a little bit healthier, right? Yeah, breathing <laughs> easier. Breathing a little bit easier. The, uh... St still being careful, still maintaining our six feet of distance, but Certainly. breathing easier. A lot of good stuff happening, though. We talked about that before the cameras started rolling. Hoboken is really opening up. It's back open for business, isn't it? It appears to be. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of things going on. Uh, we've seen the return of a lot of initiatives that usually take up the, the, the summer uh, attention in Hoboken. We've seen uh, a return of the, the concerts. In fact, the, the week of the 16th is, is when the concerts have started. Um, Movies Under the Stars will be returning to their locations, not just on Pier A, but also Mama Johnson Field and some other locations. So, and those concerts, meanwhile, are, are on Pier A, uh, sorry, Sinatra Park, uh, Uptown, also back in the Southwest Park. So they have a lot of different venues opening up. Um, all of this fell by the wayside last year, mm -hmm. obviously, for obvious reasons, and you know, we're pretty charged to have them back. Uh, there's a lot of energy in, in the, the town. And people are pretty excited about it. These are all free great events put on by the city of Hoboken, of course, and they give Hoboken residents and visitors an opportunity to be back outside, be back together safely, but also to avail of some of the great restaurants and bars that are in Hoboken. So the owners have to be thrilled that this is happening again. Absolutely. You know, you're getting feet, you're getting foot traffic in Hoboken again. And that's really what, what if, if you want to know how we recover, that, that's how we recover. You get right. people back. It doesn't have to be blown out. You know, just having these events, having, and I tell you who's most uh, pleased to see are, are a lot of the performing artists, you know, which, with which we keep a, a very good relationship. Absolutely. You know, they're, they've been sitting home, they've been doing everything they can on Facebook to, to keep themselves creative and, and doing a lot of writing, a lot of uh, developing new sound and stuff like that, but they just want to be back on stage. You can only do so many concerts via Zoom, tell us so many jokes via Zoom, show your artwork via Zoom, so yeah. to be back and get the vibe and get the energy of the live crowd is really what they've been craving. You do, yeah. yeah, and they've, they, they've been pretty vocal about that, like, yeah. oh, we're, we're back, you know, we've got events like the, 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 the Tom Petty tribute, they've got the Bob Dylan birthday celebration. Uh, one of my personal favorites in Hoboken, the, the Sinatra celebration. Um, that'll be going off in a couple of weeks. So it, yeah, it'll be great to have music on the waterfront and in the various parks and have people out and have the mu movies back. And again, just get people moving around and out and enjoying themselves safely, you know, using social distance, using their mask where applicable. Hopefully yep. people are getting vaccinated and, and everybody's keeping safe. But hopefully we're coming out of this. It's and, really and an exciting time. Maybe one of the happiest stories that you wrote or something that was so well received, the St. Anne's Fest is back this year. St. Anne's Fest is back, and we can get our Zeppeli. I'm going to go get in line after this. <laughs> you know, because you, you got to get in there early. Um, yeah, that was that was a tough blow for Hoboken. They had, not that we lost that last year, we lost the Italian Festival uh, in, in September. A lot of other festivals fell by the wayside, but to have St. Anne's sort of the the centerpiece of, of Hoboken's festival lineup uh, return is huge news, and yeah. live music with that, and and Absolutely. you know rides and sausage and, and all this other stuff. So yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty psyched. It's I just gotta, such, such an important part of Hoboken's culture, isn't it, the St. Anne's Fest? I mean, everybody, President sure. Reagan went to the St. Anne's Fest. Reagan Festival was there, I mean. Sinatra was there. Absolutely. We're, we're hundred and, I wanna, I might get this wrong, but I, th I feel like it's the 111th, something like right. that. So it's, I think that's right. It's up there, you know, right. this, is, this, is, this is a long running, it's as, lo as long running as you can get. So it's, it's pretty exciting and, and it's great to have them back. And the Zeppeli, as you said, will be fresh and hot and ready to go. They will be. It's always, that's always the hottest yep, uh, weekend in Hoboken, but it's worth it. Stand in that line and get them. It's worthwhile. Yep. Something else you wrote about earlier this week was Pier A Park. The kiosks in the park are opening. What, what's happening with them? So they've activated a couple of the, the, these kiosks have been there for, it's basically since the park yeah. opened. And people have been wondering what's going to happen with them. So if they finally, uh, due to some initiatives, uh, that went through council last year uh, during the period where they're trying to help out businesses during COVID. They were able to finally get the, the kiosk to open up. So you have uh, a couple places, Alessio's, which does some gelato. Uh, and then you have, uh, am I, am I, I want to make sure you get this right, Play Fun Eat mm -hmm. is at another one where they 
let you rent games and right. stuff that you know you don't necessarily want to lug down to the park every right. time. But while you're down there, you're like, oh, that'd be great. Let's go over and grab that. Sort of hacky sack sort of games and, and hacky and, sack, and the balls uh, that you Jenga, bounce. spike ball, spike all these ball. other these, yeah, all these things that are are really you know you see them all over the the parks now, and right. it's, it's great to have them down there. You got and they have ice cream, they have all sorts of things. So it's really. You know, there's a lot of effort going into activating, getting people back out on the streets, and it's really exciting. And Chris, before we wrap up this segment, the gazebo at Peary Park has been an issue we've talked about before on the show. Prime Cycle had been using this space. I think the city of Hoboken let them use it to help them continue their business during a difficult time. But some changes might be coming there. Some changes are forthcoming on that. Okay. Uh, we're going to have more information on that that, that, that will be you know, amenable to a lot of people. Great. You know, they've been waiting to see what's going to happen there. So, And that's great. Great, great news for Prime Cycle, too. Absolutely. So. Well, it's great to have Hoboken back in business, as you said. It's great to have the restaurants flow, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment. We're also going to come back in a few seconds and talk about some more political and legislative issues that are happening over the next couple of days and couple of weeks, couple of months. Thank you so much for tuning in this week to Tapped into Hoboken. Again, I'm Steve Lennox, and I'm joined by Chris Holleran, our reporter from Tapped into Hoboken. Thank you. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. At Hudson Regional Hospital, we promise to be prepared for your emergency. We promise to provide world-class robotic surgical care. We promise to treat you like family. To provide accurate diagnostic care. To provide the most innovative orthopedic care at your doorsteps. We promise to treat your baby like our own. To never stop investing in the best of spinal care. To be with you every step of the way. Here at Hudson Regional Hospital, we promise to take care of our community. Hi, and welcome back to Tapped into Hudson. Chris, I want to get right back into the conversation. I want to get into some legislative talk. Over the past couple of days, you've written some stories about rent control and what the future of rent control looks like, especially as it relates to short-term rentals, i.e. Airbnb. What's going on there? So there's been a lot of talk about Airbnb in Hoboken. Um, a couple months ago, we ran a story about Councilman Michael DeFusco, who was running an Airbnb out of his apartment. And some people took issue with the fact that he was doing that. And we felt it was a story that was worth covering due to the amount of rentals he had had and the timing that he had had. And this was during the pandemic. Uh, he had had, I believe it was close to two dozen different rentals go in and out of his apartment. So he it was kind enough to answer our questions. Yes. And we put the story out there and then kind of let it lie. and. Yeah, since then the the administration and and some of the uh, the allies of the the administration have been making a lot of noise about Airbnb and how it applies and and it's gotten to a point where, now where they you know, wanted to take a look at how it applies to rent control buildings and you know this is kind of a Pandora's box which yep. Jersey City well knows you know once you start tugging on Airbnb's cape uh, they're going to spin around and and it has a lot of people wondering what the intent and, and what the, you know, the outcome would be talking about the application of rent control in a short term. So Chris, uh, let me cut you off. Let, let's talk about the intent first, because you mm -hmm. mentioned Councilman DeFusco. And of course, right. as you said, this sort of came from a story that we had published a couple of months ago and other newspapers and media outlets picked up on that same story. Mm -hmm. But he's certainly not the only person who's renting his place out on Airbnb in Hoboken. I mean, this is, this is a common he, thing that's happening. He's certainly not. Right. Yeah. So. It, you know, there are a lot of people who have built sort of cottage industries out of, out of having Air, Airbnb in units within their buildings or, or with just purchasing units and, and turning them into Airbnb. And the problem, well, not the problem, the effect of that, the impact of mm -hmm. that is that it's depleting housing stock on paper. Right. You know, because there are less, the profit potential for Airbnb is so much higher than it is for just a standard rental. 
right. potentially. Right. Uh, there are a lot of risks involved, which the pandemic certainly exposed. Yep. You know, when, when they cut down on travel, a lot of these Airbnb people had had a really tough time and, and lost their shirts. Um, so, you know, there's a lot to take into account here. You know, what, what is the overall impact of exploring this? And then when you bring in the rent control issue, that makes a lot of people squeamish because there's a, there's a huge gap between market rates and and you know rent leveling rates in, in Hoboken and uh, you know a lot of people don't understand that you know they 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 will own a property and rent it based on what the the, the comparable properties are going right. for not knowing that if there is some sort of rent control within their building then they then have to go to the rent leveling office and, and can you explain what rent that? control is can you even take it a step back I, it's a complicated thing to explain. Yeah, so it's, it's, you know, year after year, your, uh, the, the rent for which you could charge on, on a property that you own is decided at a set rate. Right. Not a market rate, not on, on comps, but, all, but on a defined rate set by the government, set by the local government. In this case, the, the rent leveling office, rent leveling and stabilization office in Hoboken. So... If, yeah, this is a bureaucratic onion yep. that, that is starting to get peeled and people are, are starting to, to tear up over and it. And rent control, it's a public policy that exists to protect tenants, obviously, Absolutely. right? And to protect the housing stock. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like Hoboken is a place, even though, I guess it would be considered a transient community in some ways, right? There's a lot of renters Less that come in and out. Less than been historically, yeah. But, but yeah. But know. even those renters, and when I say transient, maybe that's not the right word, they don't come and go in three day shifts or 28 day shifts or even you know 56 day shifts like Airbnb right. sort of encourages. Even these tenants tend to stay, stay around for at least a 12 month lease or 24 or least, month lease. Yeah. 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 So I mean, it's, it's and it's exposing some quality of life issues right. too. You know, you got people coming in and out. You don't know who they are. Uh, by and large, Airbnb and and similar VRBO, similar uh, services, have a lot of uh, mechanisms in place to make sure that. You know, you're not getting a huge party crowd, but you know it comes down to enforcement and, and the day-to-day -day realities of, of people being people. Right. So, uh, and you know, that came to, uh, you know, it, it was really exposed back in August uh, when there, Hoboken had its first homicide in years, right. uh, and that took place at a VR, VRBO rented establishment within a residential building yep. in the middle of Hoboken. So that. That also, in addition to you know what was going on with the councilman, the, the conversation about short-term rentals was going, and and now uh, they're taking a look at how it applies to the properties themselves. And you know it, it's not just a Hoboken thing. There's housing stock nationwide is is really feeling an impact from short-term rentals, and so you know it's good to take a look at ways to sort of mitigate that and mitigate the the the, the, the fact that people are losing out on possible homes right you know but at the same time it's, it's a very bureaucratic and very complicated and very potentially litigious process and who's driving this right now uh, currently uh, we've got councilwoman Jabor uh, council sorry councilperson Jabor and uh, councilman Doyle ha are currently working on the the legislation it's, it's going through committee and we're not sure how it's gonna pan out but it's certainly gonna reverberate for for a while uh, based on sort of the nerves that have been stepped on in, in discussing this. Great. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And it's certainly something you'll stay on top of and we'll continue to bring the information to our readers. With that, we're going to take another break. We'll be back for two more segments. We're going to talk a little bit more about the social life in Hoboken and a return to normalcy after COVID-19. Thank you. Hudson TMA reminds you that a bicycle is considered a vehicle. When you ride a bike, you must obey the rules of the road. Ride single file in the same direction as traffic. Obey traffic signs and signals. Signal your turns and look behind you before you turn. And always stay alert. A brand new truck isn't just a brand new truck. When it's tough enough to have best in class available payload and smart enough to know that a cab can also be an office, a truck equipped with best-in-class available towing that asks, why can't all that power power more than just this truck? No, your brand new truck isn't just a brand new truck when it's the all-new F-150. Tough this smart can only be called F-150. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate-controlled facility equipped with state-of-the-art security, packing supplies, 
a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Hi, and welcome back to Tapped Into Hudson. I'm Steve Lennox, and I'm the publisher of Tap Into Jersey City, Tap Into Bayonne, and Tap Into Hoboken. June, of course, is Pride Month. It's being recognized across the country, in some ways across the globe. And of course, it's a time we celebrate equality and the fact that love is love. Uh, and and we, we recognize the LGBTQ plus community. And Chris, I want to talk about that for a few minutes. So Hoboken has really taken quite a few steps over the past couple weeks to recognize Pride Month. It started with a flag raising at City Hall. Uh, it started with the flag raising at City Hall, uh, which is an annual tradition. Yeah. They've been doing it for years. Um, and then they, in the past couple of years, they've incorporated a twist on that where they've painted the crosswalks outside of City Hall with the rainbow flag. So that's sort of become a very colorful uh, uh, symbol of, of Hoboken's equality and, and, and steps to welcome the LGBTQ plus community in Hoboken. Uh, all of which has been, you know, tangibly measured by by other sources you know it's not just a, it's it goes beyond a flag it goes beyond a, a sidewalk there have been statistics that have shown how well hoboken has done with the lgbtq plus community so it's it's not just superficial and, and it's something that hoboken is really proud of and doing well at the community it's not just what they've done outside of city hall but they've taken some steps inside of city hall too right to make sure that their their employees are recognized and, and feel accepted absolutely yep. yeah they've done you know they've done stuff with the and this is also a measure that just popped up in Jersey City, but you know, making sure that single-sex bathrooms, or sorry, uh, sing, single-occupancy bag yes. bathrooms are generic sex and, and, and not labeled men's rooms or women's rooms or like anything like that. It's just sort of bathroom. <laughs> so it's 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 just simplifying things, frankly, to, to to make it more welcoming for for the entire community. And, and and it gives you know, we read the press release that came out in, in Jersey City about them making a similar move. And I believe it was Hudson Pride that sort of said, you know, we have to be mindful of the fact that people that are still uh, trying to determine their, their identity, their gender identity, need to feel safe. Sure. And it seems like such a, a simple thing to, to think about, but, you know, it does. you yeah, walk it, into a men's room, you think nothing of it. I walk into a men's room, your wife walks into a ladies' room, you know, but if, if, if you're still trying to consider things in your mind, you may feel a little less comfortable right. with what bathroom you walk into. This has become a polarizing issue. It has, and, and I, I think the response has been the simplification, just right. the bathroom, right. there you go. Right. So it's, it, it makes sense, and it's been working in, in a lot of establishments throughout Hoboken. I know they've spoken of doing it within City Hall, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure where that stands currently, but it, yeah, they, they've been taking a lot of steps. And beyond that, you know, th there have been a lot of things that have happened in Hoboken as far as the, uh, the Human Rights Commission yes. had, had given uh, Hoboken a what its highest rating, 100% uh, of, of their uh, equality index and how they handle LGBTQ plus uh, issues. So, you know, it's again, as I was saying, it's not just rallying around the flag and painting a sidewalk. You know, Hoboken has done a, a lot in, in, in a pretty short amount of time to cool. sort of be more welcoming to the community. Well, it's great to hear. And, and, and Chris, something you published earlier this week was a, a special mass at Our Lady of Grace. Father Alex Santola is going to be... Uh, performing the Catholic Mass for the LGBTQ plus community, letting them know they're welcome into the church. This is uh, Father Alex Santora's fourth annual LGBTQ plus Catholic Mass, Roman Catholic Mass, and it, it, it's it's pretty significant, you know, because it, the, the Catholic Church has, has had a lot of scrutiny in their handling of of that community, and and historically they've marginalized a lot of people within that community. So I had the honor of attending the mass a couple years ago um i'm not lgbtq plus but I, i'm roman catholic sure. and so it was really really powerful to see how you know those those who were attending that mass and, and then got up and spoke about their struggles within the church it was it was really mo genuinely moving to to see how the, you know their faith has has kept them involved it'd be easy to walk away from the church from yep. from based on what had happened and to have uh, Our Lady of Grace and Father Santora welcome them back and give them this platform to, to discuss their struggle and discuss their you know, return to the church more or less. It's really, really powerful. Uh, to the point where there are a lot of detractors. You sure. get protesters outside annually. Uh, they line up across the street and they have their signs. And you know, it's, it's, it, 
has a little edge when you're walking in, but once you walk into the mass, you're just sort of overtaken by the amount of love in that room. And it's really, really, yeah, I'm, I'm a cynical guy and, and yeah. it's, it's moving for me. So yeah. it's, nice. I, I really, I was, I was happy to be there. I brought my children with me and they enjoyed it. And, and you know, it's a great, it's a great mass, and you have a chance well, to check you, it out. You know, Hillary whether Man. we decide to worship in a church or in a temple or in a, you know, in a mosque, whatever it may be, we think of these places as, as being welcome and opening. And mm -hmm. it sounds like that's what Father Santora really wants to prove that Our Lady of Grace is in Hoboken, and, and that's the bottom line for Father Santora, isn't it? It is. You know, Father Santora is a very outspoken member of the, the community. He's a, he, he likes to take a lot of politicians to task, and he's very vocal. He's a very vocal social media presence. Um, but this is one where he's... You know, it's sort of taking the taking the flag and run with it, and yeah. and you know, with he gets a lot of support from members within the community. He gets a lot of detractors from from you know those within the Catholic Church. But in the end, it's it's a great experience, and it's it's a very fulfilling experience for anyone who who would be interested in checking something like that out. It's God, this going to yeah, when, when and where is uh, that mass? Ten thirty on June twenty seventh. But Our Lady mass. of Grace Church, which is located at that is at. Uh, Fourth and Willow in Hoboken, Fourth right by Church Square Park. Perfect. Chris, thank you for that. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back for one last segment. Thank you. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers the quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapintle Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Cutting edge surgical care is right here in Secaucus. Robotic surgery is safer. Shorter hospital stays. Smaller abdominal incisions. The size of an M&M. Here at Hudson Regional, we provide world-class robotic surgical care. Hi, and welcome back to Tapped into Hudson, our last segment here this week. Chris, you published a story last week that got a lot of attention. Um, not so happy attention that Veritza, a very popular restaurant, had been shut down, or closed down, I guess, mm -hmm. a victim of, of COVID-19. Uh, then today you published a story, breaking news, that David Carney, owner of the famed Madison Bar and Grill, is going to take it over and reopen in September. Tell us about that. That's really good news. You yeah. know, uh, Veritza came on the scene, and you know, there, there are a lot of pizza joints in Hoboken. Yep. So it's, it's, you, every time you see a pizza place open, you're like, okay, well, what are you guys bringing? And they brought it. You know, they really brought... A, a unique uh, taste. They had a, a, a specially made oven put in there, and you know, instantly people were like, "Oh, this place is really, really great." And so when they opened in October, and then when they shuttered last week in in, in early June, people were really, really disappointed. Yeah. So they had just gotten their momentum, and people were wondering what happened there. So uh, after a solemn week uh, of people sort of mourning it. Uh, the news came out that David Carney, who who was longtime proprietor of the Madison, and uh, you know, well-known, uh, gregarious guy around yeah. town, a big everybody's a big. Every, I know Dave is his tagline. A lot of people do know yeah, Dave, so he gets the, it works. But uh, so what we know is that Dave is opening um, a pizza joint in Veritza, and that's you know you couldn't ask for a better guy to go in there and, and sort of take it over. Um, we were able to get some information about what he's going to do in there. It's going to be very similar to what Veritza was doing 
they're using fresh ingredients and there this sounds like an ad for for his place but uh fresh we'll ingredients and uh yeah we'll give, <laughs> he deserves it you know he's done a lot for the town yeah, so uh but yeah they're doing uh, like a fresh uh he's doing like a jersey style neapolitan was yeah. how he described it so i'm pretty anxious to see what that entails and uh wish him the best of luck and I mean, the bottom line is you joke about how much pizza there is in Hoboken, but there's never too much good pizza, right? I mean, that's... that's you can never have too much good can pizza. can never have yeah. too much good pizza. And when we talk about David Carney and how much he's done for the town, you know, mm -hmm. these past 15 months that we've talked about at nauseum have been so difficult for the restaurant community, the business community. Dave's been an outspoken advocate for trying to keep those businesses going. I, I believe at a press conference with Senator Menendez when he was in to discuss some uh, financial support coming in, I believe David said he was able to keep his whole staff on board. Uh, of course, he went through some tough times too. But David sure. has really been one of those guys, one of those business owners who's who stepped up during this this crisis. He did. You know, he went dark initially. He went dark dark for a while and shut it down. Not you know, closed it down temporarily sure. to see you know sort of weather the first wave. And then once things started to reopen, Dave was able to get in there and make the most of it, like all these businesses that survived. You know, uh, we say Veritza was a victim of COVID. We don't know exactly what happened there. You know, it, they were very short lived and they made a huge impact right away. But you know, restaurant turnover in Hoboken is, is consistent. Uh, it's become more of, of an issue in the past couple of years and certainly more complicated by COVID. But yeah. what you like to see, you know, people who have invested in this community for a very long time doing well. And it's great to see Dave not only keep the Madison afloat, but then go around and open up uh, a, another place. Right. And it's, it's good. You know, it's, you like to see good things happen to good people. And, Absolutely. Uh, and you like to see good pizza. Yeah, so, good, good. So it's I, I all love, good. I love good pizza. Yeah. And Chris, Father's Day is coming up in a couple of days. By the mm -hmm. time the show airs, it'll be Father's Day. Main Street Pops has announced that they're doing their weekly uh, event under the, under the viaduct there, and they're going to have some Father's Day specials. They are, yeah. They've got a lot of different artisans coming in uh, with a, a Father's Day focus. You know, they're working on all sorts of gifts for, for dad, uh, dad themed things dad themed gifts so and it's on the day itself so it'd be a great opportunity to go down and uh, you know check it out bring dad instead of getting on the tie he doesn't want bring right. him down there and find something he does want do we wear ties anymore i haven't worn one in a we're, while we're lucky you have pants on today we are I mean, lucky yeah, everybody's totally lucky honest. i have pants on today so uh yeah there's a, a great opportunity to bring dad down and give him a, a chance to pick out his own thing and then there's a lot of opportunities to go out up there you've got carpe diem you've got the pilsner house beer garden giving a lot of plugs away today, Absolutely. but it's, okay. like, it's great to have people out on the street in Hoboken, as we mentioned earlier on, and get them back into places and get that foot traffic. So events like Main Street Pops and, and places like the Madison and all these other places that are doing well, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's really hard to imagine. As someone who's been involved with the hospitality industry to the extent that I have, it, it was hard to imagine these places making it through the past year, and, yeah. and they have, and they're thriving, and we're grateful, and we're grateful to everybody who's going out and supporting them. And, and so. if we want to keep them thriving, it's up to us to spend our money. You it know, is. You give away the free plugs. We'll keep giving away some plugs. We'll take some advertising dollars, too, as well, of course. We will, but and I'll we'll, go eat some pizza. Absolutely. So. We'll eat their pizza. We'll spend our dollars. Chris, before we wrap it up, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that yesterday, June 14th, was Flag Day. And you attended a very special event last night. I did. I was, uh, I was honored to be uh, present at a ceremony within the Elks Club that was hosted by the Elks and co-hosted by the Hoboken American Legion Post 107. And the Hoboken Boy Scout troop was there and they presented the colors and we had a very in-depth discussion about the flag, the American flag and what it meant, uh, the background, its evolution and honoring the flag on June 14th. So it was, it was a good room and uh, it was great to be there. And you know, these are organizations that put a lot of work in year round supporting the community. So it was nice to be there and, and, and wave the flag with them. So tremendous honor. Chris, that's awesome. You know, in 24 minutes now, you've covered the pride flag, you've covered the American flag, you've covered a whole lot of issues, Hoboken businesses, churches being open. You know, these are all things that seem so natural, so standard for all of us, but you know, these are tough times we've been living. It's a polarized world we're living in. It's great to see that Hoboken is starting to thrive again. I thank you so much for coming on the show today and for continuing the reporting you've been doing for Tap Into Hoboken. I know that all of you, our readers and our viewers, appreciate it. We're glad you keep coming back to Tap Into Hoboken. We hope you'll keep coming back over and over again. Bring your friends and your family. We'll see you again next week. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.